Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the first webinar of the Gender Equality Academy. My name is Vasya Mathesi, and uh, I'm working as a project manager in VLABS, an innovation ball motivating and facilitating young, young researchers and entrepreneurs to challenge uh, the traditional innovation system in Greece and Cyprus. And I'm also uh, the deputy coordinator of uh, this project. So, uh, before we start today, I would like uh, to start by uh, sharing a, a few words with you about uh, the Gender Equality Academy and uh, what this project is about. So, um, welcome and I'm about now to share my screen and start uh, the presentation. So, what Gender Equality Academy is about. Let's start with uh, a short, a brief introduction. Uh, currently, there are many gender equality programs, projects, and a great gain knowledge and experience uh, about gender equality. Although uh, gender analysis remains rarely appropriated within research projects, um, at the same time, large differences among research performing organizations in various countries exist. And there is a small proportion of researchers and practitioners uh, that are familiar with theoretical and methodological concepts of gender and feminist scholarship. What G Academy proposes is actually a different way, a more holistic approach. Uh, we are an Horizon 2020 project which develops and implements a high quality uh, capacity building program on gender equality in research and innovation and higher education. And this is uh, the first in a series of webinars that will follow up. Uh, at the moment, we are offering in person trainings, interactive and participatory workshops, and uh, webinars until the end of the year that are available in our website, GE Academy. EU. And uh, next year, and for the following two years, we will also offer a series of summer schools in Madrid, Dublin, Budapest, uh, open collaborative uh, courses that will be online and train the trainer sessions at the same time. Okay, uh, this is the partnership. We uh, are a consortium of partners, uh, 12 organizations representing 11 European countries. And this is a very short interview uh, overview. Thank you very much for the attention. And I will uh, now give the floor on my colleague, Maria Sanzuliano, so we can start with this uh, webinar. At the same time, I would like to inform you that uh, we are uh, live uh, tweeting about this uh, very webinar. And without any further delay, Maria. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Let me uh, share my screen uh, straight away. Okay. So, uh, again, welcome to everybody. Good afternoon. Maria, my name is Maria San Giuliano. I am the CEO and research director of uh, Smart Venice. Um, with my colleague Natasha Sega, we are the GE Academy partners uh, in charge uh, of planning and organizing the webinar series, but also the e-learning uh, component of the GE Academy, therefore uh, the um, distributed online uh, collaborative courses that will follow. Uh, today, we will be the moderators of this uh, online event. Welcome to the inception uh, webinar of our series. Uh, we hope that you will find your participation useful. We are very happy because uh, we, uh, up today, we had uh, 57 registered participants uh, from 21 countries, uh, even far beyond uh, the European Union. So as I was mentioning, um, this first webinar is part of a series. Um, the goal of the, uh, the webinar series in GE Academy is actually to make uh, knowledge, tools, good practice examples um, available to a wider audience um, in a compact format, but still uh, experimenting some uh, interactive uh, functionalities to make it more lively and participatory. Um, 
until the year, the end of the year 2021, we are going to um, propose you 12 webinars uh, on several topics, um, which will all be linked to the related uh, in-person trainings and workshops uh, on similar issues. So the program is well aligned to have um, a webinar introducing parts um, leading to the uh, in-person trainings and workshops for those who can then uh, attend the face-to-face uh, -face events. Today's webinar, uh, as you know, uh, is dedicated to uh, introducing gender equality plans. Uh, we have two main uh, learning objectives. The first one, uh, we want to familiarize you with policy frameworks, facts and figures on gender in research in the EU to get a practical understanding of uh, how gender equality plans can work as means for promoting institutional change. We also want to present and discuss some uh, good examples of um, universities, uh, research institutions, uh, which committed uh, to uh, implement institutional change for gender equality via uh, gender equality plans. Um, three presentations will follow. Uh, Nathalie Rion from Yellow Window will mainly refer to the first learning objectives, uh, while uh, Chiara Oppi from University of Ferrara and Amaya Luza Garcia uh, from the Polytechnic, Polytechnic University of Catalonia will uh, present uh, how their um, institutions um, developed gender equality plans. A few technicalities uh, to um, the, the platform we are, we are using is really intuitive, uh, but um, uh, please um, take care of the following issues. Um, we will have three distinct uh, Q&A sessions to allow you commenting and making questions. And this will happen via the chat box only. You can see um, the icon, the chat icon in the bar below. Uh, and this, uh, so please don't use the raise your hand functionality, uh, but make use of the chat box icon only. This will uh, open a text box to the right side of your screen when you click on it. Uh, while the Q and A icon um, is to be used for technical uh, issues only in case you have any. Uh, when you uh, type a question, before typing a question, please uh, select the all panelists and attendees options. Um, not the, not, please do not pose questions to the panelists only. Um, and finally, for those of you who might need, uh, my uh, colleague is now sharing in the chat uh, a link for uh, keyboard shortcuts to use the platform without a mouse. Uh, I would like to give the floor now to uh, Nathalie Rion. Um, Nathalie is a managing director of um, CESEP and lecturer at Rennes University. She has a broad experience, more than 25 years of experience in uh, gender equality. Uh, she also took part to the uh, development of the Gender in Research uh, Toolkit uh, conducted by uh, Yellow Window and much more. But Nathalie, please, the floor is yours. Good afternoon uh, to everybody and thank you for participating in this webinar. After a brief insight on gender inequalities in Europe in the field of research and a brief presentation of the EU policy framework, I will focus my presentation on gender equality plan uh, as a tool for institutional change. This is really important to make the link between these two. I will then uh, present the GEAR tool, which is a step-by-step -step guide for developing and implementing gender equality plans. Now, before we start, I have a question for you that should normally appear on the screen, um, which is, um, 
can you estimate the percentage of women in a typical academic career in grade A? So grade A is the highest grade, so it corresponds to full professor. Can you vote on the percentage? Can we have the answers to the pool? Okay, so quite a, a, a number say that is 24% uh, 45% uh, say this is 24% and then uh, some uh, are very pessimistic with 12% some are a bit optimistic with 35%. Uh, in fact, okay, close this. In fact, as you oops, manage to, okay, as you, as you see it on this slide, uh, which in fact is extracted from uh, the Xi uh, figures that is uh, published by the European Commission quite regularly, and this is from uh, the last issue in uh, 2018, you see that uh, the proportion of uh, women in grade A is 24%. Uh, in fact, in 2013, it was 22%. So, <clears throat> so you see that um, there is a still a vertical uh, segregation. So that means that the highest hierarchical positions are usually occupied by men. In fact, if you look at the specific field, which is the science and engineering, you will see that here you have even less uh, women at grade uh, A. So you have only 15% uh, of women at uh, grade A. And you see the same type of curve, which is going down for uh, women. Uh, uh, if you see grade C, grade B, grade A, and it goes up. For, for men. So this is just one illustration of inequalities you can still see in research and innovation. There are obviously others uh, to, um, to get more sense of them. I would uh, just uh, uh, ask you to, to go uh, to this useful tool that is uh, the, the Xi figure publication that present horizontal uh, segregation as well. So the difference in participation of women and men within uh, scientific fields, but also occupation, also the difference in participation in uh, different economic sectors. So that's really a very uh, important tool to highlight uh, uh, inequalities uh, in, in Europe. There will be also, as mentioned in the introduction, some um, uh, training that would be specifically on, on gender inequalities and look more carefully on this. Now briefly on the European policies promoting gender equality in research. Um, first, uh, I have to uh, remind you, but I'm sure you, you, you know that, uh, the, that this is not new, that the European policies promote gender equality in research, but also generally. I mean, we have uh, an article since uh, the Treaty of Rome, so since the beginning on uh, equal pay, we had a, a number of directives in the 17 and 70s and 80s on gender equality uh, in the labor market, uh, in education, uh, in pension, in social security. We have now um, a recast directive of uh, 2006 that in fact compiled part of these directives. So they apply obviously as well uh, to gender equality in research. Natalie, uh, sorry for interrupting you. Could you please uh, set your presentation in a, a full screen mode? Uh, I, thank sorry. you. I no I problem, it thanks. Was, yeah. Sorry for that. Um, in terms of uh, gender equality, 
in specifically in research, I would also just want to highlight to you that um, in uh, 1999, the European Commission adopted a, a communication on women in science. This uh, was at the time the fifth uh, EU uh, framework program, uh, research program. So back from this program until now in Horizon 2020, you will see some uh, provisions relating to gender equality in research and innovation. And now to go to the, sorry, to the gender, uh, to, to, to now, uh, in the European research area, uh, that is called ERA, uh, but also in uh, Horizon 2020, there are three main objectives that are pursued by European policies. First, to foster equality in scientific careers. Second, to ensure gender balance in decision-making processes and bodies. And third, to integrate a gender dimension in research and innovation content, which means addressing both men's and women's reality and consider gender-specific research to fill knowledge gaps. So that's the three main objectives. There are a number of documents that, uh, in fact, operationalize this. Just looking at one um, aspect here, mentioning the European uh, Research Area Roadmap, uh, where you can see the importance given to gender equality in research performing organization as um, member states and associated countries should develop policies on gender equalities in a research performing organization and regularly monitoring their effectiveness and adjusting measures as necessary. These are all element, elements we will um, also find later on in the presentation and I'm sure as well uh, in the examples that you will have with the two other presenters, the importance of monitoring and adjusting measures. So that's the responsibility for member states and associated countries to support uh, research performing organization in developing gender equality. And obviously for research performing organization, they should uh, enhance their policies for gender equality in research and ensure their implementation. So what should be the specific focus, the special attention uh, in uh, these uh, policies? It should be uh, looking at areas where women are underrepresented, for instance, in senior positions, as we have, as we have just seen, and in research management, but also to funding schemes. Uh, studies in the past have shown that uh, they can be biased in terms of selection of uh, of uh, research proposal uh, led by women and disciplines where the imbalance are greatest. Now let's go on institutional uh, change, which is the core of uh, my intervention. And what is important with institutional change is to be clear that within an institutional change, uh, the approach focus on the organization. So in, you can say, stop fixing women, now start to fix the system. Look at the, uh, at the institution. So the strategy should be to remove the obstacles to gender equality that are inherent to the research system itself but also adapt the practices of the organization. And in terms of objective, I mean, this is also coming back to the objectives we have mentioned uh, before, uh, which are enhance women's representation and retention at all levels of their scientific career, and to promote the integration of the gender dimension in research and innovation content. To address structural uh, production and reproduction of inequalities in research, it is crucial to act upon mechanisms that reproduce, produce this, uh, uh, this inequality and then should be changed. So the areas of intervention that have been identified are 
organizational culture, reconciliation of work and private life, I mean, a recent directive has been adopted at European level on this topic, and this is about uh, caring responsibility, not only for, for children, but also for the elderly. It's about also um, flexible working time in terms also of, of location, uh, flexible location. Uh, areas of intervention can also be on recruitment, selection and career progression looking at formal and informal criteria use and potential gender bias also in assessing uh, performance and capacity of, uh, of a person. It's also about leadership and decision making, sexual and gender based harassment. And finally, integration again of a gender perspective within the research content itself. To promote institutional change towards more gender equality, the Commission insists on the, using the tool of gender equality plan and support this uh, adoption of mechanism by research performing organization. So what is a gender equality plan? As defined by the European Commission, a gender equality plan consists of a set of actions aiming at First, conducting impact assessment or audits of procedures and practices to identify gender bias. It is really important to audit very carefully the way the organization is functioning. As I said already, the focus is on the organization. Then we have to identify and implement innovative strategy to correct any bias that have been um, appearing uh, when conducting the assessment and audit. And finally, we have to set targets and monitor the progress via appropriate indicators. It is clear that the scope of a gender equality uh, plan may strongly vary. It will depend on your own uh, research environment on the field you are working the discipline you are working on so there is not just one standard equality gender equality plan but what is clear is that a gender equality plan uh, includes a set of action with different degree of complexity the set of action should articulate a strategic view aimed achieving gender equality in the organization so it's important to note that the gender equality plan is not the mere adoption of general objectives fostering gender equality. We have seen that in the past. I mean, that can be a very important step to mention in your documents in, um, that the gender equality is the objective, is an, an important objective, but that's not enough. Uh, a gender equality plan is not either a broader strategy or plan including a gender dimension among others, like a diversity or anti-discrimination plan. It is really important to, to see uh, gender uh, not as, a, as part of a, it's not just women, it's men and, and women and their relation, and within diversity, you also have to take gender uh, as, um, as its intersectional dimension. So that means that for all grounds and discrimination ground as well, you have to think about men and women, because sometimes you know that uh, you know, for handicap, for example, the, the norm is, uh, is the male handicap, and you also forget about the specificities that, can, uh, that women uh, facing a handicap can, can, can uh, can have. So now um, I have another question for you that should appear. Do you have any experience in implementing uh, a gender equality plan? And when I'm asking you that, it's in view of what I've just mentioned about what the gender equality plan. So waiting for your votes. OK, 
Okay. Can I have? No. So the majority, uh, no. And then you, we have some that, uh, yeah, it's quite, it's quite balanced in terms of some experience and the direct experience for, uh, for five participants. Okay. So um, what I want to say about uh, gender equality plan is that, in fact, uh, you can broke this in different uh, steps and phases, and each requires specific types of intervention and, and knowledge also, probably. And you, you can see first that there is uh, an analysis phase, then there is be a planning phase, and finally, an implementation phase. You can also present it as steps. And that's what the, the gear tool is doing. Uh, so that's really a presentation of the gear tool. You will have uh, later in the end of the presentation, the link, but you can find all these steps there. I will briefly uh, go through them. So first getting started, it is really the, the first uh, step is to reflect on your context. I mean, you can be uh, tempted because you have been to a conference, you participate to a webinar, and you think, oh, this is really an interesting gender equality plan that was presented to me. I will just copy and paste it in my organization and it will work. Obviously, this is not true. You have really to start to look carefully at your own context. What is also important is to find support. And by support, I mean alliés, alliés internal, to the organization, but also outside. That's also support in terms of expertise. Do you have gender expertise in-house or do you have to find some people who can support you in terms of gender expertise? Uh, then, still in this phase of, uh, this first phase of analyzing, you have the step of analyzing and assessing the state of play. Uh, and for that, sorry, we cannot see with this, um, you have to analyze data. I mean, we, you have heard, I'm sure, about the importance of, um, of having sex segregated data and to go as far as possible into the details of all the types of functions and, and posts you have in your organization. But it's also looking at existing measures and policies and perhaps past measures and policies to identify what worked well, what worked less well. And uh, that, that is really important to assess as well these type of measures. Then you are ready to set up a gender equality plan. And here it's important to get inspiration from others and to see what they have done and what are the, the difficulties they face and see uh, how they can be countered. So you have to define realistic uh, objectives and measures. I mentioned the smart, uh, the, the, the smart aspect of them. Uh, you have also to, uh, to agree on uh, clear staff responsibilities, who is doing what, etc. So that's some aspects uh, that are very important when you set up your gender equality plan. Then comes the, the stage of the implementation you have to implement your gender equality plan. And we have seen um, in the past, and that is why then in the gear tool, uh, this is really an important point that sometimes it's just added, it's additional measures not really embedded in your institution, in your organization. So it's really important when you start implementing to Im embed your measure in the organization. So for example, if you do, uh, you said that you should reinforce the capacity of uh, all the people within the organization. You can do specific gender training, but you have also to look at all the types of training you are delivering and ensure that their gender is taken into account. It's also good to, to, to give some visibility to your gender equality plan and to be prepared to face obstacles and resistance. 
when you do the implementation of a gender plan, it's also key to monitor your progress and evaluate uh, what, uh, what uh, are the changes that uh, appear to, to, uh, to happen. So this is really important as well for monitoring your progress. And then you are ready to uh, what comes after. So that's the new cycle. You will see also from the examples that are presented that a gender equality plan is not just a one-off exercise. You have to ensure uh, its sustainability and continue work on it. Success factors for institutional change. I mean, it's clear that a number of elements appear to be particularly important to support your work uh, on gender equality in research uh, and uh, innovation. And we see in research that this, uh, when these elements are present, uh, they, they lead to a more efficient um, and effective change in the organization. You can also see the success factors, in fact, as basic requirements to ensure that your uh, gender equality action uh, will be more resilient and uh, impactful. So first, get support from top leadership and senior management. That's uh, something you will hear quite a lot. I mean, without the support of top leaders and senior management, this is quite difficult to, ar to arrive to as institutional change. Ensure there is a gender equality board that is well equipped and well located, well equipped, that means in terms of human resources, in terms of time, in terms of expertise, well located, it's also to be uh, in the, the organization at the point located where you can influence the rest of the organization. Involve different categories of stakeholders, uh, embedded uh, in existing structure and management procedure, make sex disaggregate disaggregated data available, set clear targets and practical objectives, develop competencies, monitor and evaluate uh, practice. Be uh, flexible and resilient. I mean, this is really uh, something that is also important. You will face obstacles, so you have to, <laughs> to be resilient. Uh, this is the gear uh, tool uh, link that you see uh, in the screen and you have also a screen shot of, of it. So um, thank you very much for hearing uh, my presentation. I hope uh, you, uh, you find it interesting and I'm now ready to, uh, to answer some questions. Okay. Thank you a lot, Natalie, for your interesting presentation. Now it's your time to make your question to Natalie. We have um, just a couple of minutes left, so please, if you have some questions, type them in the chat box and I will straight away read them and uh, give the floor back to Natalie to answer. We, okay, we, we have, uh, Someone that thanks you a lot. It was really clear, Natalie. Okay, I'm looking at what is here. Sorry, because uh -huh. I I see now that a lot of people have asked me to put in full screen. I really, I'm really sorry. I was in my in my presentation. Okay, you can find. Uh, okay, we have a question. Uh, just leaving the time to type it. You can, uh, for the next q and session, you can also type it uh, during the presentation. Okay. We have a question that uh, uh, asks to Natalie, which are, in your experience, the organization bodies to be involved in order to implement an effective gender equality plan? Yes, okay. I mean, organization bodies, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about here gender equality plan within an organization. So I think I mentioned already some, uh, some elements. I mean, you should certainly involve uh, your hierarchies. So it will also depend where you are situated, but it's clear that you should not just be left to, uh, for example, human resources uh, uh, management. It should be also uh, going into um, uh, in, in, in the different uh, laboratory, or I don't know how, depending how you are organized. 
I think it's really important, and you see that more and more also outside of a research institution, to, to have some people identify uh, in, uh, in key services departments that can re be a relay for you to get information and also uh, to pass on the uh, yeah the, the the message of the of the implementation so it's it's why also in uh, quite a number of uh, event organization there is an equal equal opportunity body that is created within the organization that meet regularly and can really uh, work uh, and, and ensure that the work is not left to just one uh, one body but try to to widespread throughout your uh, organization Okay, thank you, Natalie. Oh, we have a um, few questions uh, uh, now. Uh, so, mm. first, uh, um, uh, we will uh, share again uh, the peer toolkit li uh, link uh, to the chat uh, after this presentation. Then, uh, the, there is someone that is um, facing problems in their institution um, in uh, leadership uh, yeah. support uh, on gender yeah. equality. Uh, because they find a lot of resistance to have affirmative action. Mm -hmm. Any, do you have any opinions, Natalie, in this matter? Yes, uh, I think this is really uh, a big issue. Um, okay, so affirmative action, in fact, is a term that comes from the United States. I mean, so first, perhaps you can start to to show to uh, to your. Um, uh, leadership that uh, within Europe we have a clear legal uh, setup that talk about positive action. So I mean this is part of the gender equality strategy to adapt, adopt, sorry, uh, positive action. It's even in the treaty that you can adopt positive action. So I think first you should try to shift <laughs> the use of the word because when you use the word affirmative action yeah, I think there is a certain way there that can be, in fact, negative. So just switch to positive action and use. There is a there is a already reports as well on an ex, and and a good practice on the type of positive action you can implement. Uh, in terms, of, um, um, yeah, I had one. Okay, um, yes, there yeah. is uh, one question about. Uh, um, a bit more specification about the resilience component component you mentioned at the end. yes for the resilient component uh, but i think that's why also um we insist on the fact that uh, the, the the gender equality plans are set up within an institutional approach change approach so that means that this is not just a one-off that this is something uh, it's a plan. You start uh, very systematically, then you implement it, then you you assess. Uh, you can see it as a cycle. So, in fact, uh, I mentioned the implementation phase, and then you go back to an analysis and audit of what went well, what what what's much more difficult. That's what I mean as well in terms of being resilient, in terms of pushing the, act, the action. We, we know gender equality is uh, is not a short term objective. Uh, so um, this is really important to always monitor, evaluate, and from that start a new cycle uh, in your in your gender equality plan and see where you want to focus. Okay, thank you very much, Natalia. Thank you all for your question. We can go uh, proceed with the second presentation. I am now giving the floor to Maria to present our next speaker. Yeah, thank you also from my side to Natalie. And after um, her um, uh, informative uh, and interesting introduction, we go uh, straight away to listen to uh, um, concrete uh, experiences of uh, designing, implementing gender equality plans. Uh, so the floor is to Chiara Oppi. A research fellow at the Department of Law and a contract uh, le lecturer at the Department of Economics and Management of the University of Ferrara. Chiara has been uh, directly um, engaged in uh, all the process of institutional change from the University of Ferrara. Ferrara is really one of the uh, Italian um, renowned uh, good practices in terms of um, uh, institutional change in academia. 
The floor is yours, Chiara. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. A lot to everybody. I'm going to share my presentation. Um, okay, so you should see the presentation. Okay, so yeah, what I'm going to present is the experience of the University of Ferrara. We have started developing uh, um, gender equality plans in 2011, so we have a quite long, let's say, experience in developing gender equality plans because uh, um, we started in 2011 and the next year, in 2012, we started in mapping the context of university in terms of gender, uh, developing our first gender, gender report. So since 2012, we asked ourselves how we should promote an institutional change uh, in, the, in our university and um, uh, we started first focusing on the context. So since 2012, we uh, started a collaboration with the Statistical Office of the Ministry of Education, University and Research for the use of real, reliable data on the university sector, considering specifically the University of, uh, of Ferrara. And then we went on trying to compare ourselves uh, uh, to also the European context. So since 2013, we developed our, uh, our gender report we, at the University of Ferrara. We develop uh, a gender report each year and uh, uh, focusing also introducing some of she figures indicator indicators in order to be able to compare ourselves with europe and as italian is a gender biased language we started also to use a gender inclusive lang language and to push the change also in the um, documents administrative documents that the university uses uh, since uh, the 2014, the gender report uh, is uh, the University of Ferrara is appointed uh, as a permanent monitoring tool concerning the policies and the action of the University of Ferrara. In uh, the University of Ferrara, it's uh, one of the first university to implement, uh, has been one of the first universities to implement the gender report uh, in Italy. Uh, that's why in uh, 2015, we, we have been involved uh, by the Department of Equal Opportunities of the Presidency of the Council of Ministers to uh, the development of a gender report project for public administration. So uh, for regions, municipalities, uh, and for the university, uh, university as well. So to drive some indicators to map the context in such institution. Uh, in 2016, we try to move on from the mapping the context perspective and try to see which were the results, the outputs and the outcomes of the policies put in place by universities. So we shift our gender report from a context analysis to assessing the actions put in place. And uh, in 2017, uh, we, um, the university appointed a stable scientific committee and a stable operating group for the development of the gender report in the period 2018 and 2021. And in 2018, uh, um, the, in the, the new statute, the university was approved and the, the gender report became, the approval of the gender report became one of the duties of the board of directors. Now we are in 2019 and we are working on the 2018 gender report. Each year we develop the gender report concerning the previous year. So we manage the previous year data and we will present next month the 2018 gender report. Uh, these years we asked ourselves and it's what, and what I'm going to present to you because I think it's the most relevant uh, topic concerning the institutional change we are trying to reach in our university, the impact of gender report in the university governance. So the link between the gender report and the university governance and with the programming and reporting documents in the university in order to understand whether there is a governance awareness concerning the possibility to use the gender report as a strategic tool. 
the gender uh, report uh, cycle we are uh, we have structured in our university starts uh, from mapping the context i told you that uh, we mapped the context for several years uh, and uh, through the uh, work of the university equality bodies uh, we reach uh, the development of gender equality plans so we have three years of gender equality plans in our university and a uh, university programming that takes into account the results uh, of the context uh, of the gender report for mapping the context. Then we have a series of actions that we put in place uh, consistent with the gender equality plan. And then we develop uh, a gender report that analyze the outputs and, uh, uh, if, uh, and some of the outcomes of the actions put in place. And then we go again to map the context to understand whether some changes occurred in our institution. So we adopt basically a three years approach. Uh, consistent with the gender equality plan structure, we uh, develop uh, three different gender reports uh, in these three years. In the first year, we map the context, so we help the gender equality plan uh, in define uh, its structure, in define uh, the objectives uh, and the action uh, to be put in place. Then we have a second year where we develop a gender report based on a free theme. Uh, and a third year where we assess the action is the, uh, the final year of the gender equality plan. And in the easier, we try to understand the output and the outcomes of the action put in place in the gender equality plan. Why do we adopt this three years approach? First of all, because this is consistent with the gender equality plan structure and with its monitoring objectives. So we analyze the context, we develop the actions, we develop the objectives, we uh, perform the actions, and then we analyze the results of the action. Moreover, because these help, we, we believe that these help us in increasing stakeholders' involvement concerning the university policies, we are able to uh, analyze more in depth the results, uh, to drive a better analysis of the results, of the outputs and the outcomes of our actions, so to go more in depth. And uh, it gives us also the ability to explore specific uh, topics. Uh, that's why in the second year of the gender report we have a free theme because uh, there are a lot of issues that we would like uh, to deepen and the gender report for mapping the context has a quite stable structure we uh, we analyze students we analyze the academic staff we analyze uh, the technical and administrative staff and we analyze the governance bodies so there is not much room for uh, other analysis and when we uh, analyze uh, the assess the actions put in place. We just consider the actions, analyze the results. So the second year, it's a good occasion to develop specific themes. And uh, the, among the themes, I just listed some of them that could be interesting. Uh, there is, of course, the involvement of the gender reporting governance, and this is what we have done this year. Then we have the gender budget experimentation. So the aim in this sense is to understand the effect of the expenses of the university in terms of gender. So to analyze the different impact on women and men of the expenses put in, uh, of the expenses of, uh, put in place by the university. Then uh, we would like to go more in depth in the intersectional perspective, just not limited to the gender perspective, and also develop additional surveys concerning the output and the outcomes of the university policies in order to understand better the stakeholders' needs. Um, the gender report can be considered a strategic tool in the University of Ferrara in a certain, in a certain way. So uh, where are we? Um, the agenda report is included in the strategic and performance plans. Since the 2017, the content of the gender equality plan falls within the uh, strategic plan in a specific area that is equality, equal opportunities and well-being for those who study and work in the University of Ferrara. In the same way, uh, the gender equality plan falls in the performance plan, so the performance objectives are um, linked with the gender equality plan, again, in a specific area. 
And in addition, since 2016, the University of Ferrara uh, in the statute put its commitment to the correct application of the equal opportunity principle in the election and appointment of the university bodies. Uh, due to the regulation uh, we have in the University of Ferrara concerning uh, the inclusion of the gender equality plan in the strategy of the university, through the gender report we monitor some of these elements. And in particular we monitor some aspects concerning governance. We monitor the composition of all university bodies to see if the gender equality principle is respected or not. So we monitor also the election and appointments of all the bodies for a correct application of the equal opportunity principle. Uh, we monitor also the respect of the re Italian regulation, so the obligation to reserve, for example, one le at least one third of the member of the Academic Competition Commission to the less represented gender, so we ensure the gender equality principle is respected also in the commissions. And uh, we also monitor from a budget perspective, but as I told you, we would like to go more in depth in, in um, there. Uh, considering uh, uh, the expenses in the university, uh, we monitor the budget for positive action, the specific budget for positive actions. Uh, the national contest is uh, rapidly changing in Italy, in particular for those that refers uh, to a regulation that announced the importance of the gender equality plan in a research institution. Uh, for example, uh, I report here some uh, of what's new in the Italian context. Um, in 2019, a national regulation reinforced uh, the role of the gender report and equality bodies, increasing uh, the relevance uh, for university to adopt a gender perspective, to, present, to collect uh, data on uh, uh, the context, uh, considering the gender perspective and present such data. Uh, moreover, we have uh, in 2018, the National Agency for the Evaluation of the University and Research System uh, developed a report and published a report uh, explaining how to integrate performance and budget cycles uh, in the universities uh, with a specific approach to taking into account uh, the gender perspective. Again, uh, the, um, there are national committees that are working to develop guidelines for the gender report in academia. One example are the guidelines for the gender report developed by the Conference of Rector of Italian Universities last, uh, last year and this year. The University of Ferrara has been involved together with the other few universities in developing such guidelines that have been just published uh, in last, last September. And again, at central level, uh, it's example I'm talking about ministries, there are experimentation about the gender budget. So an analysis of expenses from a gender perspective. Uh, so uh, now I'm trying to explain better the results uh, of the 2018 gender report. So uh, we have tried in the University of Ferrara to focus uh, on the use of gender report as a strategic tool. We would like to understand whether the gender report is actually included as a strategic tool uh, by the uh, governance bodies to develop uh, the strategy of the university. So um, this is basically the, the cycle I showed you before, but is integrated with the most relevant planning and reporting documents of the university. So starting for the gender report for mapping the context, we expect to develop a consistent, of course, gender equality plan. And this is what happens uh, basically in our institution. The gender equality plan should also affect uh, the strategies development, so the strategic plan of the university, the overall plan of the university, not only limited to a part, but uh, to have a broader dissemination in the strategic plan to, to affect all the policies put in place. This should affect also the budget, so uh, the overall budget of the university. We have a three-year budget and a yearly budget. It should affect both the, those budget and then uh, the performance plan so the performance objectives 
after that actions are put in place and uh, uh, we should also have a financial statement uh, that uh, is a report uh, represented uh, uh, linking uh, the results uh, with the also gender perspective then uh, we have the gender report for monitoring the action that should assess what has been done during the year or the three years period as i showed you before uh, in terms of action the results of such actions and the performance report so the result concerning the, the performance starting again with mapping the context and analyze whether changes are, pre are presented in, um, in our institution. Uh, to, to analyze uh, the role of the gender report of a strategic tool, this year we conducted a series of interviews. And I'm going to present pros and cons that we highlighted in our gender report. We have a few pros and uh, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of cons that I'm going to show you. Pros are that uh, we basically interview technical and administrative staff that is involved in the preparation on programming and reporting documents. So these are those who create the documents that are approved by the, the, the governance bodies. Uh, the gender report appears to be a well-known instrument. Everybody knows the gender report within the university. And uh, its relevance as a reporting tool has increased over time. Uh, the gender report for mapping the context is, of course, adopted as an instrument for developing the gender equality plan. And attention is also play, paid to the results of the action implemented. So there is a revision of the strategies in the gender equality plan, uh, considering the results showed by the gender, by the gender report. However, the cons refer to uh, the integration between uh, the gender equality plan and the other document, the strategy documents, planning documents. Uh, because uh, we, uh, we still, the University of Ferrara still present a strong separation between the gender perspective and the overall strategic perspectives perspective as i told you we have the gender equality plan that is including the strategic plan but in a separate chapter this separation remains uh, in all the planning and reporting documents so uh, the gender perspective does not pertain all the governance pro process uh, and uh, the gender report uh, lacks uh, in be fully considered by the governance body for the definition of the policies in general. The gender perspective is not considered apart from the gender equality plan. And uh, so we have this uh, strong separation that do, do not allow to include uh, fully a gender perspective and to plan objectives considering the gender perspective and on the other way to read the results according to the gender perspective. Um, again, we don't have a full commitment of the university bodies, basically. Uh, we have uh, sometimes a commitment, but it, it really linked to the people we are uh, addressing our question to. So not all the university bodies show their commitment toward the gender perspective. And uh, I, we also find uh, some resistances, not only in the university bodies, but also in the interviewees. Uh, among the technical and administrative staff. So they resist the change and so we don't have this gender perspective that is spread within the, the, the governance documents. There is a lack basically of bottom-up approach. Uh, we have uh, done uh, training programs. Uh, we have tried to talk with people. Otherwise, uh, sometimes uh, we, we uh, got that uh, there is a lack uh, of uh, interest in the gender perspective by those who develop these documents. So to draw some conclusions of uh, what we have discovered through this, uh, this work, uh, we have an institutional change uh, in particular for which concern the governance processes and the involvement of the gender perspective in the governance process that has started but has not been fully achieved. There are changes in the national framework that should be addressed by the university and that are addressed by law. 
So the university statute and regulation are consistent with the changes in the framework, but there is not an actual change in governance. And uh, the gender report basically is a tool whose uh, relevance is limited to the gender equality plan. And the gender equality plan is a standalone document that uh, is not uh, shared and is not integrated with the others. So there is a need to increase university body and the personal awareness about the inclusion of the gender perspective in governance. For that, uh, we have started to think about the future perspective. How should we integrate the gender perspective and to achieve this change in governance? We uh, are going to develop to design surveys to better align the action included in the gender equality plan uh, with uh, university personnel needs. This uh, to increase uh, the personnel commitment uh, toward the gender perspective, uh, to increase uh, their interest uh, in, uh, in this, uh, and try to adopt, uh, to create this bottom-up approach uh, that leads uh, also to a change in governance. We are going to develop training programs for the technical and administrative staff in order to explain how the gender perspective can be integrated in governance. And also we would like to focus more on the gender budget. So to increase, uh, to highlight, uh, the, the increase the attention of the link uh, of, uh, between the expensive, so the budget, and the gender perspective. So uh, um, push an adoption of the gender approach in planning financial resources. That's basically uh, um, photo of the of the University of Ferrara context and the situation we are now. So I thank you for your attention. Here's the, the link of the gender report of the University of Ferrara that you can find available also in English. So if you can, you can download them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chiara, for your interesting presentation and example of the, in your university. We have already some questions for you. And okay. one is about, um, in your presentation, you mentioned that you monitor the correct application of equal opportunities, for example, in the university election. How do yes. you monitor it in, in, pra in practice? Uh, we monitor uh, in the in the election both in the in the university bodies we monitor the composition of the body we the bodies we monitor the changing the changes in the university bodies so we have uh, uh, in our gender report you for example you can see in all the gender report for mapping the context we have a, a sort of snapshot concerning the composition in the different tiers and the changes where we highlight uh, the gender composition and also the role you know that uh, sometimes uh, uh, we we reach a correct gender composition but uh, we female are put in the lowest uh, levels uh, for example in the in some uh, university bodies we have a lot of female students but no female full professors so we also monitor the role of these uh, uh, of these components then for which concern the community Commissions, uh, we one by one we monitor the commissions and the composition of the commission whether they respect or not the gender perspective. It's a really difficult work because uh, usually the inform information system are not updated for that. So we have to ask people, administrative staff, to collect uh, such data and during year we have put in place uh, uh, some autom automatism to, to do that because at the beginning they weren't not uh, available. So we have uh, to ask the people to reconstruct uh, all the process. But now we have put in place these uh, information systems that uh, allow us uh, to monitor, better monitor the composition. Okay, thank you a lot Chiara for your answer. You still have a couple of minutes to uh, post your questions so I invite you to write them in the chat. But uh, we can also go back to one question of uh, the previous uh, presentation, in which um, there is a question on the examples of on how to promote uh, visibility of the institutional plan. Do you have any suggestion from your, your experience? 
sorry, which is the question? If it's uh, above, it is um, from Violeta. And it is a suggestion of the examples of how to promote visibility in of your institutional plan. Okay, in uh, so we, at the University of Ferrara, we have tried to promote visibility developing networks. We have started communicating with other institutions and also getting best practice from other institutions in order to understand how we can promote visibility. We have, let's say, three, three main areas to promote visibility. We should promote visibility inside the organization. And for that, uh, we um, organize specific events for the academic staff, the technical and administrative staff, to in order to uh, better explain the gender equality plan we implement in the university and to present also the result, to report the results concerning specifically these uh, two types of uh, uh, staff. Then uh, we try to organize uh, and also we try to send emails to the students and organize events for them in order to share also with the students the results. We organize events that also involve the community, so the municipality of Ferrara, the region, and to share also with them our experience. But I also think that it's really extremely important to develop a network with other research organizations. So uh, we, have, we, try to, we have tried to establish a network that is in place between the University of Ferrara and the other university within the region and all of them develop the gender report. And also at the national level, for example, the participation in the conference of university rectors group was a very uh, interesting experience because we have seen a lot of um, uh, um, best practice from other institutions that we would like really to replicate in our institution. Okay. Oh, thank you a lot. Time is fine, so I will go uh, directly to the third uh, presentation. I will go give the floor to Maria to present uh, Amalia. Yes, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chiara, for, uh, for presenting how gender equality plans via a careful uh, uh, state-of-the-art analysis and reporting can really be uh, shaped as evidence-based uh, policies. Uh, the floor is now to um, Amaya Garcia from uh, the University uh, Polytechnic of uh, Catalonia. Um, we invited uh, her to present uh, how a gender equality plan uh, already existing can be then um, it be integrated, reinforced uh, via um, an Horizon 2020 project such as DICO. Uh, Amaya is university professor um, at Department of um, uh, Business Organization. Uh, she is part of uh, research groups of the of her university on gender equality, architecture, science, and technology, and was involved since the beginning. Uh, in the first gender equality plan design uh, at UPC in 2007 and now um, responsible for uh, the GECO project in uh, UPC. So the floor is yours, Amaya. Thank you. Um, okay. I hope you, you see well my presentation. Uh, thank you for your introduction, Maria. Uh, good afternoon. I'm going to explain you our experience in gender equality. And first I will, I will start with some a brief description of our university, UPC, and also some data, just a couple of figures, so you can see um, our situation regarding gender equality. Then I will I will explain which are uh, which which has been our history regarding gender equality, which began in late 90s, 
And finally, uh, I will explain which are, in my point of view, the key points for UPC reaching the, the right way, or I would say almost the right way for gender equality, and which are our current and near future uh, priorities. And I will finish with some concluding remarks. UPC is, a, is a, an institution of research and higher education in Barcelona and other cities nearby. And it has three characteristics that, that are re relevant for the, for the webinar topic for gender equality. The first one is that UPC is a public institution. And this means that it must follow the regulations of public universities regarding its activity and also regarding uh, the academic staff career. So recruit, recruitment and promotions must follow some rules, which is okay, but we have to take it into account. The second one is the activity field. UPC is focused on engineering, architecture, science and technology. And as you may, may know, these STEM fields are male dominated, already Natalie uh, said in her first presentation. So uh, UPC as a global is male dominated. And the third one is the size. Uh, UPC is an institution with 18 schools, uh, more than 30,000 students, more than 5,000 workers, 3,000 are uh, academic staff. And this big size makes it difficult to reach everybody and, and to reach uh, everything, to cover everything. I will just now present a couple of, of slides with some data. In the, in the first one, we have the percentage of women and men uh, for the different categories, the starting uh, from the students and finishing in the, in the highest one, the grade A, which is the full professor. And you can also compare the situation in 2005 and 2018, I think just after. As, as Natalie also told you, uh, this usually in, in most universities has a, a scissor shape, but at, university, at UPC, since we are in the STEM field, uh, this is not even a scissor because uh, the percentage of, of women among the female students is already quite low, 26-27% uh, uh, percentage. Uh, there are differences in depending on the on the studies, but but the the, the average is this. Uh, and then, as it happens in, in other universities or all universities and other institutions, uh, for the highest category, the percentage of women. Yeah, this is due to different existing barriers and um, what we call glass ceiling. In this other figure, we see the composition of the most relevant decision-making bodies, which are the, the rector and vice-rectors, the directors of schools and faculties and of departments and institutes. Then we have the governing council, which is the body where relevant things are approved. And finally, the academic Staff Recruitment and Assessment Committee, which evaluates the staff uh, for promotions and other processes. What we can see here, besides verifying that gender balance uh, rarely occurs, is that in decision-making bodies that are formed by appointment, which in this case are the vice rectors and, and this assessment committee, the situation in 2019 is even worse than that of 2005, or almost the same. Instead, uh, you can see that for the governing council, uh, for which normally groups of people join to form a list of candidates, we have already reached gender balance. Some general conclusions from previous figures and comparing also the situation in 2005 and 2018 19 are the following ones. We see some improvement in the percentage of women belonging to categories A, B, and C. Uh, for example, especially in, in category A, because we passed from a 3.7% to 11% below the average Natalie told at the beginning. Uh, but there's still a lot of work uh, to do. But this improvement uh, is good because we see that uh, things can, can be changed. Also, and probably as a result of this, 
we see an improvement in the group of directors of schools, faculties, departments and, and institutes. And a high improvement in the governing council, which is one of the most relevant decision-making bodies. And I think that this is because having in mind gender balance when building a list of candidates has become a standard way of acting. On the other side, there is no significant improvement the last years in the number of female students. This, of course, improved in previous years since 40 or 50 years ago, it was much worse. But it seems that it has stalled at a maximum value. And this is a global phenomenon that requires actions from more society sectors to break uh, the stereotypes uh, at the same field. And finally, it is worth noting, noting that those decision-making bodies formed by people directly appointed by the rector are the less gender balanced one. The good news is that fixing this is easy. Well, it is easy at least from a formal point of view. I am talking about gender balance in the composition of decision-making bodies because I understand that to include the gender dimension in decision-making, we need to change both the processes, but also the composition of the, of the decision-making bodies. And I think that nowadays, uh, at least at UPC, gender balance is not possible without establishing gender quota. And I know that this is a very controversial issue and resistances may appear. So here I would like to, to make you a, a question to gather your opinion regarding quota. The, the, the question is, are, are you in favor of introducing quota as a means to achieve gender balance and gender equality? And you can say yes, no, or if you don't have a clear opinion, the, the last one. Okay, 72% of, of this group are in favor. Well, this is not, so, not very surprising because uh, most of you are already uh, in this topic. So uh, when you are in this topic and the, the years go on, you, you got convinced. But, but it's worth noting to, to, to observe that there's still uh, twenty two percent of people uh, against it because uh, it's true that quota have some some drawbacks or problems. Okay, and what has been doing UPC during the, the last twenty or twenty five years? This is a, a very summarized image of the history of UPC in relation to gender equality plans or gender equality. UPC began to worry about the shortage of female students over 25 years ago. So in 1996, created the so-called woman program. And basically there were female students going to high schools to explain their experience. And also UPC organized some activities for high school female students. The program required a lot of time and effort uh, from many people and the results were, the impact were not clear. So in 2000, uh, the rector at that time decided to, to close this program. Then in 2007, with the Spanish law on gender equality, UPC created the, the Equal Opportunities Commission, which at that time covered both gender and disability. And now we have it separated, which I think it's, it's good. And also in that year, got funds from the ministry to design and implement the first gender equality plan, which I must say that it was too ambitious and without clear in target or indicators. Uh, and at the end, many actions were not, were not done. But after this first uh, experience after the first plan, it came the second 
and the third one. And this, uh, in the designing uh, the second and the third plans, we include uh, the, the, the suggestions and the opinions of, of the community. So we, we followed a participatory process. With the third plan also, UPC started to expand the gender equality structures and networks. I will explain it later. later. And in 2017, UPC started the participation as a partner in the European project GECO, which stands for Gender Equality in Engineering through Communication and Management and Commitment. And after all, all this history, I believe that finally gender equality has become a priority for UPC. I think it's very important. An example of this is the fact that since the 8th of March of this year, we have, uh, for the first time, a vice rector for gender equality. As you see, we started to work on gender equality more than 25 years ago, but we had to go through a long learning period uh, before reaching the, the right way. And now I will tell you which are, in my experience, the key points uh, for that, that we had to follow. The, the first one is make gender equality be a priority of the rector. Since this is the way to guarantee that there will be resources allocated to the gender equality plan, and also his commitment and, and active participation uh, are an example for the rest of the institution. Um, this way we can increase the engagement of, of, of other people. And how has gender equality become a, finally a priority? In part, of course, is a result of our history and, and why not some internal activism. But I think that it has recently been really favored by the context. And here I am referring to both the national and autonomic laws and to the attitude of society toward uh, gender inequalities. And also this has been fostered by the understanding of gender inequalities consequences. Uh, the thing is, that before there was a, was a question regarding this, uh, making good declarations, or the, uh, it's easy, but we, want to, we have to go from the, the declaration of good intentions to the actions. The second one is organizing gender equality within the, the institution. For us, this is, this is a requirement because organizing things in, in such a big institution, uh, it's, it's difficult without a, a structure. But also allows the decentralization and, and facilitates the engagement of more people. We have at the top the, the Vice Rector for Gender Equality. Then there is a technical office to give support to the different uh, gender equality plan activities, which now th this means having one person and her head that has also the responsibilities. So I think that this is not enough for such a big university, but they do a lot of work, of course. And the previous one, the, the vice rector and the, and the people of this gender equality office, plus some academic staff are members of the equality unit which must exist by law. And this is an, an executive board in charge of making proposals for the gender equality plan and also supervising the, the gender equality plan itself. Also, we have the gender equality committee uh, formed by many people that meets once or twice a year. And also we have a network of equality officers. And this network, is formed by people belonging to the direction board of the 18 schools and faculties. This way, the messages are spread to all schools and faculties, and at the same time, we get engagement. And also we see that there are some schools that organize activities for their people out of the gender equality plan, I would say. And finally, there are some people uh, involved in the different working groups for the gender equality plan K projects. Overall, we have more than 50 people directly involved in gender equality. You would say that in a 5,000 workers institution, uh, having 50 people is just 1%, it's not uh, a lot. But 18 of these people are the, uh, in the direction of the 18 schools. So uh, we have um, 
uh, people belonging to, to high decision making bodies involved in, in this. Even though some of the people involved the last year uh, had knowledge of gender equality, it's necessary to use tools that allow us to design, monitor, and evaluate the, the gender equality plan in a systematic and rigorous way. This is also a way for ensuring the sustainability. And here we are thankful to GICO, the project, because it provided us three critical things. The tools, mainly by means of trainings and the help desk in charge of Yellow Window and BNK. The human and material resources, which are really necessary because making all these in such a big institution entails a lot of work. And the monitoring and evaluation, because it's a, it's a work package of the project, which is in charge of the German partner guesses. This allows us to correct and how do we think and also to improve the, the following gender equality plan. And besides Chico, I believe that it's a good practice to use the gender equality structures and in general to involve all the community in the process of designing the gender equality plan. Involving the community has many benefits, also for dealing with resistances and get engagement. And for us, it is very important to train the community, to build capacity, raise awareness, get engagement and commitment, and also to allow the sustainability. At UPC, we have been doing a lot of trainings, especially during the last two years. Some of them have been done by Yellow Window, which is also a partner of GICO. But now we have our own people doing these trainings. So uh, we have seen that, in fact, we have built the capacity. The topics have been introduction to gender equality and gender equality plans, then gender and decision making, academic career, research, teaching, language, etc., and also trainings on sexual and, and gender based harassment. With those trainings, we have had more and more people sensitive to gender equality and even engaged. And also, it has the breeding ground or the seed for new initiatives, as for example, our innovative project on gender and teaching. And the last one is to focus on processes and structures in order to get an institutional change. Teaching and research activities, decision-making bodies and processes, recruitment and promotion, etc. We have still a lot of work to do regarding all these processes. And in the next slides, I summarize our current and near future priorities. The first one is awareness raising and engagement of both men and women. And I would say especially men. We are using communication and dissemination campaigns at different levels. We launch a survey every year to gather opinions uh, regarding one gender equality topic and at the same time raising awareness. We want to keep doing trainings to include the gender dimension in our processes and activities to engage more and more people. And finally, we try to involve men through the gender equality structure and working groups and, and projects. The second one is to increase the number of women at all levels, because we have few women. Regarding the students, we are now working hard for giving more visibility to women, for example, using a hashtag in Twitter, but, but not only. And we have now also a project called Aki STEM, which has the, the, uh, the meaning in Catalan like we are here, and aims at increasing the, the number of female students in the following years. And in this project, there are many people from UPC involved, mostly women, but also there are high schools and primary schools involved. Regarding the, the academic staff, we are, for example, revising all the processes and, and making trainings to include gender dimension in academic career. And of course, we want to pay attention also to the working condition, and this means for life balance, sexual harassment, etc. And for the decision making bodies, we are analyzing how to change the regulations to ensure gender balance. And we plan also to start a mentoring program and a network of, of UPC women that has different objectives, but one of them is to empower women so they apply more for being members of decision-making bodies. Another priority is to include gender dimension both in research and teaching, and we are also already working on this. The part of the research is now being approached by trainings and talks, 
And for the teaching, which by the way, here will be compulsory for all universities in the near future, we launched last year a pilot program to include gender dimension in, in teaching. And it was very well received, more than expected. We had 41 people involved. And one of the outputs is a guide that will be disseminated at a UPC level. And also a group of 27 people from those group of 41 has recently won a call for innovation projects with a proposal for including gender dimension in teaching and curricula with uh, 20,000 euros. And the last priority that cannot be forgotten is the monitoring, evaluation, and sustainability of the gender equality plan. Some things we do or that are in progress are the following. The design and implement implementation of a gender equality observatory in the UPC website with all the relevant indicators to see how the situation changes and to monitor the, the impact of the plan. We make a new plan every four years. Well, it, it hasn't been always every four years, but uh, the idea is to, to have a series of, of plans and each plan is approved by the governing council. I think that this is better than having a stable plan that is being updated regularly without the explicit approval of a, of a high decision making body. We include the monitoring and the evaluation as a systematic action of the gender equality plan. And we also include explicitly as an action of the third gender equality plan, the design of the fourth gender equality plan. So we ensure that the process goes on. And finally, of course, it's important to allocate enough resources to the plan and in general to gender equality. Normally, this means working hours, but some actions need additional budget. And now I go to the conclusions of my talk. We went through a long journey full of actions that sometimes required a huge effort but had little or no impact until we reached the right way of doing things. I think it's essential to attack the problem from a broad perspective. And this means, from one side, working a lot with people in order to get to raise awareness, to get engagement, to ensure the commitment, to build capacity. And from the other side, work to change the processes in order to achieve an institutional change. It's very important to systematize the, the JEP design and implementation, making use of existing tools and also making use of the community. And don't forget monitoring and evaluation. Focus on who or the people. We need more women at all fields and levels. On how we are doing the things. And this means the processes and the working conditions. And what are we doing? And here I mean, I mean basically including the gender dimension in research and teaching, uh, our main activities. Creating all those gender equality structures and networks has had many benefits, especially for us being a, a big uh, institution. And at last, we need to ensure the sustainability of the gender equality actions and the changes. We try to do things um, well to shorter the journey to gender equality, but for sure we will have to work on, on it several years. So sustainability is really important, also resilient. It's necessary also to give uh, some kind of recognition to the people that is working on gender equality because normally they do this or we do this in a voluntary way. And, and also to not assign always the work on the same people in order to ensure sustainability. Thank you very much for your attention. And I leave here you some contact details and, and links in case you want more information. Thank you very much, Amaya, for your presentation and your interesting journey to the gender equality plan in the university. Uh, we have some questions for you already. Um, I invite, uh, as, as always, the other participants to type their questions now in the chat box. However, we can start with this one. Um, uh, there was a gap of uh, two, three years uh, in the, between the, the first uh, gender equality plan and the second one. Can you explain us uh, why? 
and also a link to this, uh, you spoke about an um, internal activist, uh, activist in your university. How has this been raised? Can you specify a bit more on this? Okay, so the first question was regarding the, the gap. Um, this was, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, between the, the I think, uh, I re if I remember well, because it's a lot of years, uh, I think that we kind of uh, prolonged the, the first plan. I mean that it didn't, it didn't really finish in 2010. We kept doing things, but until 2013, it wasn't approved the new one. Uh, also in these years, we had the, the, the crisis and uh, the gender equality uh, activity uh, felt uh, dropped. The other question was uh, about the rate of internal activism. In oh, yeah, the, inter the internal activism is uh, motivated people uh, uh, making questions in the university senate meeting, for example, also organizing uh, different events. So it's like always the same people claiming for gender equality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we can answer also to the other question that was posed just uh, before. Um, can you specify some activities that you would recommend to start with implementation of a gender equality plan? What is your experience in this? I, I would start with activities that that, that normally do not face uh, resistances. For example, we, we, we do have some positive actions for, for the promotion to full professor. We have a positive actions that favors the evaluation of women, or we have a returning to research scheme after a maternity leave. These are positive actions. Uh, and I would recommend not to start with those kind of actions in, for the first time. So some, some activities would be, besides analyzing the, the situation, making a complete diagnosis, this must be a starting point, but then trying to, to introduce the gender dimension in, in, in the activities. For example, in a, in a university, in research and teaching, we haven't found resistances here uh, from the one side because uh, for the teaching will be compulsory. And for the research, if you want to win a research call, also you have to prove that you are going to include gender dimension. So people, uh, uh, doesn't, we, we don't face resistances here. And for example, also for recruitment and, and promotion processes, at least you can, you can do trainings to to show the unconscious biases and, and this. But for me, the, the most important thing is to get the, the leadership commitment. Because of course we have had the, the apparently commitment for many, many years, but it was like mm, good intentions. 2018, it was the first time I heard a rector saying gender equality is a priority. So. And this makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Maya. We have a little space for this last uh, first question that is asking, uh, which is more or less the ratio of male participants in the trainings that you carried out in your organization. Yeah. Uh, if we made a figure here, we, we would say that the, the, the numbers change completely. We have some few, but we have some. Uh, yeah, it's always like this. And so we celebrate each year the Gender Equality Day. This last year we had 91 participants, but you see the room and it's full of women. Uh, so this is, a, this is a priority to engage more men. We have some of them and we have the rector, which is important, but we need to, we need to engage men because 
may, maybe they don't show the resistances, but if they don't participate actively, uh, it's not okay. Yes, exactly. Thank you a lot, Amaya, for your presentation. And your You're welcome. I will now give the floor to Basia and to Maria to a final wrap up. Yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Amaya. And uh, thank you also uh, to all our previous uh, panelists. Uh, I think that really the last slide from Amaya was already uh, wrapping up in a way uh, the, the common uh, elements from, from the presentations. But uh, from my point of view, um, what we really uh, learned today uh, from our uh, speakers um, was, uh, I mean, I put, put it together here on this final slide from my side. Uh, it was important to hear, especially from Natalie at the beginning, um, how important it is to take the uh, EU broader context as a, a reference point uh, in terms of uh, policies, but also figures, indicators, um, as a starting point to uh, act, uh, taking action uh, at the local level in one's own uh, research institution. There are uh, figures available, toolkits, and uh, an already rich uh, amount of available uh, knowledge and expertise that can be accessed uh, in order to, uh, to initiate um, a change process in, a, in academia and research. Um, then from, uh, from Chiara and, um, and Amaya, what I retain the most is uh, the importance of overcoming uh, separation of gender equality plans and policies from uh, the overall strategies of the university or overall strategic documents uh, and strategic actions of the universities. This was really clear from uh, Chiara's uh, and the University of Ferrara experience uh, where, where uh, a gender equality plan which is already embedded in the strategic documents uh, still uh, presents some uh, relevant amount of separations from, from the overall uh, strategy. And then uh, balance, uh, bottom-up and top-down approach uh, is also very important. Um, Amaya stressed the networks, uh, the importance of um, uh, acting both at the faculty and cross-faculty levels, engaging a variety of uh, stakeholders, uh, and the importance of uh, setting up uh, gender equality bodies and units, uh, at uh, the university. And overall, uh, it was highlighted by all uh, our speakers, uh, how essential it is to monitor and reporting, to build uh, gender knowledge and expertise, and also uh, not to uh, exhaust the existing gender knowledge and expertise, as Amaya was uh, stressing in her final remarks. Um, uh, and and uh, make uh, resources available uh, for uh, a sustainable implementation of gender equality uh, policies. So um, before giving the floor for the uh, last remarks to uh, Vasia, uh, um, I would just uh, thank everybody, both speakers, uh, participants for your active uh, um, attendance to our webinars. Uh, you will receive uh, our registration, um, our, our uh, email um, with uh, the link to fill in um, a survey, which is very important for us to monitor the interest and the quality of what we do and to further improve. And we uh, look forward to uh, uh, your um, attendance to one of our next uh, webinars. Um, maybe the next one is uh, or already announced on 13th of November uh, on gender uh, in research and innovation. Thank you and goodbye. And uh, I would also like to say uh, a few final uh, remarks. 
and uh, uh, we hope we that you enjoyed uh, the first G Academy webinar as much as we did and that you find the presentations uh, as informative as we did. Uh, we wish that this is the first step uh, towards a further involvement in gender equality uh, in your institutions or organizations and uh, that uh, this is, let's say, uh, the motivation to start getting more, uh, more and more involved. And uh, in, in this respect, I would like to uh, show you what's coming up next for Gender Equality Academy. There are sessions available for all of you, different formats and different topics from gender in research and innovation, uh, the following uh, webinar on the third, uh, 13th of November to uh, a workshop in Barcelona, Spain, dealing with resistances, that it is also available for registration on our website. There is an in-person training in Montpellier in uh, France. Uh, the course language is in French, uh, but the topic is really interesting. So if you're familiar with uh, French and you know how to speak, it is on how to avoid gender bias in recruitment and promotion. And uh, there is one more in-person training towards a gender aware research organization what you need to know but never dare to ask which is in Bari uh, Italy and uh, there are more sessions that are uh, coming up uh, next year so uh, stay tuned and we will announce everything on our social media and um, on uh, our website and last but not least uh, thank you very much for the attention. Don't forget there is an exit questionnaire and if you have time um, we encourage you to complete it right after the session because we really appreciate your feedback and uh, we want to make our session better for uh, all the participants. But if you don't have time uh, you will also receive a link to your uh, email. Thank you very much and have uh, a good uh, evening.